Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and take Hi, this is Gloria, your mindfulness coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And we have a special guest, um, her and I met in person. She's a great healer, as I would say. And I'm looking forward to hearing her story and where she's come from. Um, before we met in the gym, we used to be uh, hitting hard and competing and training, all that great stuff. But life does change, and we find our purpose in doing something completely different. So let me introduce herself, Natasha Seeley. Welcome to Life's a Shuffle podcast. And thank you for being here, and thank you for sharing your story, which you're going to share right now. Thank you for having me. It's uh, my honor to be here. It really is. And thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to be here with us and and share with us what you do and and obviously connect on a a deeper level, especially during these times with COVID and and shelter in place. It's it's really powerful for me to connect with people because I'm at home. I get tired of looking at these four walls. I need to connect (laughs) on a deeper level. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about yourself, like uh, where you come from, um, how did you get where you are today? Um, tell our audiences who you are. Well, I'm I'm Natasha. I am in California, in San Jose, California. I'm a life coach and an energy medicine woman. Um, more more focused around um, fulfillment and and purpose, and uh, I've been going down this path for a few years now, and I'm really finding a lot of love and um, passion in being in this service. Awesome. Okay. How, oh, go ahead. No, you go first. No, I was just going to ask her how she got started. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get here, and how did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... How I found this was going through my own journey, basically. And what I'm helping people with right now is something that I've been through myself. Um, I spent a really a long time trying to find fulfillment in what I was doing, and I was really unsuccessful. Um, I had all of these different jobs, and I got I had these promotions that you know I went for, which was great, and they'd satisfy me for a certain period of time. But then I'd become unhappy, and then I, I'd you know I'd find other things to make me happy, but it was temporary. So you know I'd acquire assets, and the assets would make me you know happy in the moment, but then it would fade away after a while. I even started to do fitness competitions in trying to find uh, self-love and, you know, validation and fulfillment there. And, you know, it kind of worked for a little while, but then it still left me empty and, um, and not really fulfilled. And so I've been going down, I had gone down this path for a really, really long time. I, I even tried to find fulfillment like f- through my family, you know, dedicating myself to my partner and to my kids and just really filling up my time and trying to um, find fulfillment within them and having them be my purpose. And that wasn't working either. I mean, it, all of it worked like temporarily. Mm-hmm. And What I figured out was that this all had to come from within. And so I've I've now found that being of service, um, helping others to feel fulfilled in, you know, the various aspects of their lives and them feeling whole is my service and that's my passion and that's my fulfillment. And my goal is to help other people find fulfillment in what they do and not find it from the external sources. So in in my coaching with fulfillment, I've I've figured there's like there's three main components of it. There's love, finding self-love, there's purpose, 
um, finding what you're passionate about and where your purpose is and what you feel really fulfilled doing in life. And then also achieving success in your endeavors. Um, and so, you know, going down that path as you, as you see these things that you want to accomplish in life and you, you feel like really passionate about it, having success in doing those things. And so really, really focusing and, and honing in around those three areas, um, which is a lot of inner work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when I was, um, when I was going through my path, um, and finding fulfillment for myself, it would have been much faster to have a coach. <laughs> <I'm not>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was revisiting my story and, um, I was, you know, jotting down all like my path and all of these things that I did that only left me fulfilled for a temporary time frame. And I realized that in some areas, I kind of went full circle. And then in other areas, like I just set, felt like I did so, I spent so much time like digging and figuring it out that if I would have just had someone there to ask me like the right questions, yeah. I would have been there faster, faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is so true. I was just thinking about what you were saying earlier is, you know, trying to find fulfillment externally. Yeah. It's always um, when you kind of sometimes question yourself, like, okay, you want to get somewhere. Um, so when you get there, then what? Or now what? Right? Mm -hmm. You fulfill mm -hmm. something that you wanted, you get there, then what? There's always something else. Right. Yeah. And so you find you, you find your fulfillment and you're down this path. But the thing is, is like being in, an, in alignment with who you are and, and your purpose. So you um, you achieve this one goal and you're feeling like total fulfillment. And that might be something that if if it's true fulfillment, that might be something that's a part of your life for a really long time. But we as humans are always looking for something more. We're looking to learn. We're looking to experience or explore. And we have this um, inner desire to continue to achieve and try different things. And so I, I feel blessed to be able to support people in that way. You know, when, when I think about this, you know, hearing your story, just I have to close my eyes because it sounds like my story, you know, just in a different time different mm -hmm. space. Um, you know, when I think about competing, you know, I remember growing up as a kid, getting a muscle magazine, you look at the guy, the rib six pack and big chest, big muscles, big legs. You know, when I was 25. And I finally got a trainer and started saying, okay, well, if I compete, I finally get the body I always dreamed about and they'll give me what I always wanted. Like I always wanted to have the beautiful woman. I always wanted to have a lot of money. I always wanted to have all, wanted, I want all these great things outside of me. Yeah. And I did all that and I still wasn't happy. Yeah. And looking back, it's like, dang, if I really knew, if I knew what I knew now, instead of wasting money on competing, I would have wasted all that money on a coach. Yeah. I'd have been a lot further ahead than I, than I am now. But it was great because I need those experiences in life to make me who I am today and help people out. So I'm grateful for those experiences. Yeah. Yeah, likewise. I it, it took all of those things. It takes and it for everyone it, it takes it takes those things, right? It takes learning your lessons and going through the motions to have those experience that experiences that teach you that that's not where it's at. Or maybe it is, you know? Um when I think back to when I was doing the um the competitions, I was really honestly I signed I started to do the competitions in the first place because I wanted to lose that first, that last five pounds and then to finally like love my body, like really love my body. And so I lost that five pounds and then I lost more and then I got to this, you know, um, figure competition status, I guess. And I looked this, I looked the part and I in other people's eyes, I had the perfect body, but to me, there was always something wrong. And, um, and I realized later that 
the real key, the real thing that I need to learn here is self-acceptance, self-love, how to properly care for myself, how to have gratitude for the body and everything that I am, and to walk my path knowing that it's not going to be perfect and it's okay. I am perfect being imperfect. I love that. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I like that. To I think I, I think Ron, we always kind of go back to what we say, and I just used this term recently to one, um, to somebody, uh, perfectly imperfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is. Mm-hmm. It is that, and it takes sometimes it takes some time to like re- really let that sink in, you know, and to accept to accept that. Yeah, it really does. So when you're, so how long did it take you to, let's say, find out, okay, competing isn't happening. Let me try something else. Was it like trial and error? Like I'm going to try this. Didn't work. I'm going to try that. Didn't work out. What what kind of, what happened along the way? What didn't you finally say, doggone it. I got to do something different. Yeah. So after competing, I had, to be honest with you, I had like neglected my family because competing became my like, priority. I tried to be the best mom and, and wife as I could during that time. But honestly, if you want to be at the top of competing, you have to prioritize that. And that's what I was doing. And so once I realized that I wasn't really finding the fulfillment in competing, I, um, I just stopped that cold turkey and then started turning to my health and my nutrition and looking at that a little bit more holistically and then looking at my family. And that's when I went down the path of like, (laughs) I'm going to find my fulfillment in my family. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm doing anything and anything for my kids and my husband, which is which is good. I'm proud of myself for going down that path and being like the amazing person that I was during that time. But um, I really still needed to hone in on accepting myself and um, taking really good, proper self care, and um, you know, taking taking time to myself, taking time to meditate, taking time to take a take a bath, and do things the little things that make me happy. So then the self-love fulfillment started to roll in through that piece. And then I found faith. And then that was a whole nother area that helped me to create my fulfillment as well. Knowing that, you know, there is, there is like the universe and source and um, being able to call on that and have that be a big piece of me has been a really big impact in my finding um, fulfillment as well. Wow. Just give me chills. When I hear yeah, that word universe. That sounds really good. And when I hear the, the passion of purpose and perfectly imperfect, I just get the chills because oh, man, I just, I can't say it enough. I spent so much money. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever heard my my story, but uh, when I got to competing, mm-hmm. I want to be the biggest and the baddest. Okay, I want to be the next Ronnie Coleman, right? <laughs> that, and I, I I really sit there and realize how much I had to really do. So I got involved in steroids, I got involved in growth hormone, I got involved in T three, which is basically a hormone to regulate your thyroid so that we reduce weight faster. T three, T four. For years, um, I was three also at that time. Yeah, yeah, Clint. I forgot about that. Yeah. And just to get, just to you know, I just want to, I just want to hit top five. I just want to win a trophy, and never won a trophy. It wasn't until almost, um, almost two years ago when my client of mine, when my first client could be in his first show, he uh, did two classes. He did uh, novice and open, and uh, one of them I think got third. Can't remember which one. One got second. He took me out to the screen restaurant. He gives me, buys me a Burberry shirt. I mean, I'm, I'm like, oh my God. All right. So I'm listening to him and he starts crying because he's not from America. So he couldn't speak good, good English. He's from China. Mm-hmm. And the fact that someone cared enough to put, to trust him. And we did as a team. When he sat across from me and start crying, it's like the universe told me, Ron, the reason why you never won the show, no matter how much drugs you took, is because that was not your purpose. Yeah. 
And when he said that, I realized right then there, before just before a month before I joined IPEC for coaching, mm -hmm. that this was not my journey to become a personal trainer and to compete and all that. That was not my journey. Yeah. And it was like the higher self or the higher coach they call it. It just it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like this is where I need to be at. And when I joined IPEC after that. I will never forget. They changed my life forever. Mm. Is that how you feel, Natasha? You feel like your life has been changed? Yeah, completely. Yeah. And how did you um how did you find I I see that you do shamanism here too. How did you find that and how did you find life coaching? Um you know, shamanism was just calling me. Um I think it's always been a part of me. Um, you know, shamanism is part of every culture. And um, I have um, deep roots in, in the islands of Seychelles um, off of the east coast of Africa. My, my mom is from there, and I, I grew up there in my early years. And um, I've always resonated with, you know, the, the ocean and the land and being connected to, um, I didn't know it at that time, but like, you know, I had a spiritual aspect of me, um, back then. And, um, and it's always kind of been like, I think deep inside of me, but hadn't really resurfaced, um, for, a long time until until I was looking for fulfillment because I think I was just pushing it down all of that time, just trying to be what society expected to me to me to be all of this time. You know, getting the college degree, raising you know raising the the two and a half kids and a, having a husband, and you know getting having this certain kind of a job, and then climbing the ladder and that kind of just so busy, just doing all of the stuff that you're supposed to be doing. And, um, I think I just really disconnected and it took me like really doing that soul searching to figure out that that was a, a part of me. And, um, I just ended up, you know, doing just random research. It kept popping up here and there. And finally I just connected with a teacher that really, um, sat well with me and I've been working with her for a while now. So, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that <Did> crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, crazy in a good way, because, you know, we, we do have, um, sometimes there's this view or, you know, I, I guess we go by society to, you know, you go to college and then you have, you, you get a job, you have this life and then you get married, you have kids and then you work and then you're a working mom, yeah. you know, and then, um, and, and how do we, how do we really do life? What is life like supposed to be like? Right. And yeah. I think, um, like what I've learned in this past couple of years is going through the changes too, is that the most important thing and it's exactly how you found it is that who you are or how you are within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So that was always a part of me from the beginning, even though it was, you know, pushed down or suppressed for a long time. And, you know, I was reflecting back on who or what I wanted to be like growing up when I was a mm -hmm. kid. Right. Yeah. I, I had no idea. Like all of my friends were like, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And I had no, like, I, you know what I said I wanted to be? Mm -hmm. An executive assistant. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you, the funny thing is, is that's what I am now. I am an assistant. I help people, you know? Yeah. And mm. It's Good. funny to see like the, the dots connect in that way. Like, you know, the title is different. And I, I did hold that title for a while, actually, back <laughs> for a while. But um, <laughs> it's funny to see that I'm still I'm still working in as assistant and that and but in a different way. And I am finding so much joy and fulfillment and passionate passion in doing this, you know, so I kind of I, I knew what I wanted to be. <laughs> I knew what I wanted to be back then. But like I said earlier, if I would have had a coach, maybe I would have gotten here faster. <laughs> <laughs> and you really that, would right? have known what it's called. Yeah. 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 That's I would have funny. Been 
refine that a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. I never, um, I, I did what you did is I, I think this was, but I only went as far back as high school for me is, um, you know, when everyone's talking about what they want to be, um, where they're going for college and what are they going to study, you know, all that. I, I didn't have anything. And I think I was one of those kids, or at least within my friend's circle, that I was one who just didn't have anything to say. But what stuck out was, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a nurse or I want to be a nurse. But the reason why I was saying that is because that's what my mom kept pushing me to be. And that's what she wanted me to be, even though it's not what I wanted. But because I didn't have anything to say and to kind of just try to fit in when everyone else already knew what they wanted, I didn't know what I wanted to be or what to do. But I was just saying nurse. And I didn't, I ended up not going to school or nursing school anyways. But it was just, you know, like what you said, just you didn't know. But, you know, years later and later in life, like now, you're finding that now. And and I think that... um and that's the one of the most beautiful thing about life and mm-hmm. it is that when you're creating something you're creating something that you really care for yeah and you find you know you you find great joy in in doing this or you know within the process of doing this you're enjoying it and one of the things that i've learned also is when you're in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing and you're feeling completely fulfilled with your life, you're attracting, you're attracting the people, the right mm-hmm. people into your life as well. So it's really hard to go wrong in what you decide to pursue um, as a job or a career if you're really passionate about it. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, just, you know, again, within this past um, few years now, just connecting with, you know, just like a lot of like-minded people and um, a lot of the great connections that we've had um, recently. I just, I I get overwhelmed with, you know, gratitude and with joy because I just, I can't believe it. It's very, very, um, very fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. Once you become more aligned with, with what you want and your passion and um, purpose, it really is um, the universe giving everything you need. Like, it could be the book you're reading. It could be the coaches you find. It can be the husband or wife that comes in your life or the kids that come in your life. Everything seems to flow and there's no resistance. Yeah. There's this it just book, all um, falls into your life. All falls like, in your mm-hmm. lap, right? It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's so similar to this podcast. Awesome process. <laughs> I wish I knew this. So my dad, so how you guys, Gloria's talking about being a nurse and my dad's thought, thought process about um, growing up, a son, get yourself a government job. Because his idea was get a government job, let's say the post office or UPS or whatever, because you worked there for 30 years, your retirement, and you just die. That's just, that's it. Like this, <laughs> this something past, <laughs> something yeah. past the government job. <laughs> that's it. And yeah. when I hear my dad talk about that, I mean, he passed away almost uh, six years ago. It's like when I saw him in the hospital, Pat dying, I was like, man, I got to live my life. I got to do something different in my life. I have to get together. And the minute I said it to myself, um, within 90 days after his passing, I passed my NASM test. Two months later, I launched my website, RJ Health and Fitness for personal training. A little over 18 months later, I quit my full-time job. And it's like every three to five years, I'm changing, doing something different. And it's not having a government job. And I don't think I would ever want to have a government job because life is not meant to be in a box. See, when you get a government job, they tell you what time you come to work, they tell you your vacations, they tell you your holiday, they tell you how much you get paid, they tell you what your benefits are, they tell you what your medical is, that's it. Yeah. And you know what? It's all about having a title. So if you're having, sorry, all about seniority. So if you haven't been here long, you're on the bottom of the totem pole. When you own your own business and become a coach and helping people, your creation is um, infinite. It doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. You can create your life. You can create your story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All, all in your hands. And then and then it's about 
still, I mean, there's still challenges, some challenges there, everything's aligned, but then there's fears that come up or there's blocks that come up um, that, you know, one needs to get through to get to the other side of those things to, um, to achieve, achieve the goals. Um, but it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful process. Well, we have this, um, we have this walls of resistance in our mind that we just have to, I think it's just the way we respond to it. Right. And how, um, yeah. And how we respond to that. Yeah. It's kind of like the universe, like, you know, putting like a little something in, in the way, in the path, right. That, um, says, are you, are you sure? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, I think for a lot of us, he does the, the universe is all the it. time. If you want to get there, are you going to get through this? <laughs> Can you really make it? Can you really climb that wall up Show there? Show me how bad you want it. It's mm-hmm. right here on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly. that's that's part of the work. And it's 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 a beautiful process. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my uh my affirmations every day is uh trust the process. And things are happening perfectly the way they should be happening right now. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, that's my affirmations every day. Because I guess for me, it's the only thing that keeps me sane from like your mind going out of control. Like I should be doing this. I should be doing this. I should be doing this. Like I should. And what if those two things can drive you nuts. But I take about four to five deep breaths, trust the process. Things are happening perfectly where they are and everything just goes away. Yeah, I am. In my meditation today, I came up with a new mantra for myself um, with something, you know, because I'm, I'm constantly evolving and, um, you know, growing my practice. And so my, my new mantra um, starting today is, I am worthy. And um, that was, I, I noticed that I had some stuff coming up, like, who, who am I to be doing this, you know, I'm doing these women's circles and I'm I have these like fabulous clients and who am I but (laughs) I'm Mm -hmm. totally I'm totally worthy of this and I am passionate about this and so I I can do this because it's who I am you know you just mentioned who am I and it's funny I just heard that from have you seen or watched own um Ian Love Unsant. Oh, I haven't seen her in a while, but I, I have seen her um her talk before. Yeah. So her, her her series had ended and I think um she's starting a new one, but she said that, who am I? And I remember and I think I wrote this down one time and it, what it is is who am I now? Because now you're looking at your you're focusing on now, right? So who am I now? What is my inner authority? Do I own my inner authority? And she mentioned that if you, once you find that, you own it and you own it in a loving way and own it with kindness. Oh, that's Mm. beautiful. I love that. It's gorgeous. Isn't it? So that one really stuck with me when you, and you know, just kind of reminded me that when you said, who am I? And I really like that because that's like, that's, I think one of the questions that, you know, sometimes we have to really sit back and take that time for ourselves when you find that, when you eventually find self-love like you did. Um, it's just, yeah, who am I? But I really like the part that who am I now? Because like you said, you're evolving and I think all of us are, we, we continue to evolve, right? Yeah. And grow. So I, the way I see it is with, I think with all of us in this, um, you know, in our practice and in in the changes that we're going through in our lives, it's a continual growth process. Yes. Yes. That never ends. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. We continue to develop always. Always. Yes. And I will never forget. And so it's another thing is, you know, when we open that, for me, it's opening my third eye. And that's how I've always think of it. And yeah, um, yeah, once I've opened my third eye, um, we had our guest before, Ray. And I will never forget what she said is once it's opened, you can't, it's 
it could be dangerous in a good way, but you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can see. Right. Your third eye opens up the, the, the seeing and the ability to do it. The visual, the visualization aspect. That's beautiful. I love it. It is. And I, I do have a question for you. So once you found, um, once you, you found self love and you, you know, were working within yourself and found the energy healing and life coaching. What was all this like for you once you've discovered all this? Feeling a sense of com completion, like wholeness, mm -hmm. is what I felt. Um, yeah, I can't describe it. Just really feeling whole and a sense of um, just owning who I am and knowing. I think that's the thing, knowing who I am once I had all of those things together and being able to um, walk and um, present myself in my true nature always. Wow. That's powerful right there. <laughs> it is. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> yeah, it is. I see how you talk to Gloria and I, we understand it. Mm -hmm. I want to know, going through this journey, did you face any resistance at all? I mean, outside the own thoughts you have in your own head. I mean, we all have those, right? Mm -hmm. Did you it fa it face any outside resistance? Um, hmm. External resistance. Um, you know, I had a lot of support around me. Um, I think the biggest resistance that I was faced with, which was still, <laughs> which is still like an inner thing, is um, how people would perceive me as I start to walk a different path. Um, you know, the judgment behind it, um, which was all still in my own head <laughs> but um so it's like a, a faux a faux external resistance that was there <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna think what are they gonna say when i start to do this stuff um but yeah but, um but not outside of that um no I had to be strong in just making the changes and, and, and doing it, just executing yeah. the way that I, I see it happening. Was there any fear at all? Yeah. There's been fear the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been like, even, you know, I can be in complete alignment and know exactly what I'm doing and um, how I'm going to do it and, you know, get all the inner guidance and, um, be confident, but still have some fear there, you know? Um, I think whenever we're, we're doing something new, there's always going to be a little bit of fear of the unknown, at least for a lot of us. I face that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and th did that fear stop you from any of those at all? Yeah. I would say that there were a couple of times where fear had stopped me. Not, I would say not stopped me, delayed me. Okay. But if I would have had a coach, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have had the delay. Faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, fear can be paralyzing, you know, mm -hmm. and then you, you could sit there in limbo for a really long time in, in fear of what's on the other side. And, um, sometimes the fear is like, Oh, something, um, Something is um, going to go bad. And sometimes the fear is something is going to go really good. And then what? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so there's fear can be an, out of anything. Yeah. It so it be. has, it has, it has um, paralyzed me in moments, but I'm, I've been really mindful. I've been really conscious of what's showing up for me. And then I've been, I've been working through it. And, um, I've gotten to the other side each and every time. Yeah. 
So you finally gave yourself permission to be you. I did. How does that feel? It was a long time coming, and it and it felt amazing when I was when I finally arrived. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yes, yes. When I was okay to be my authentic self, it mm-hmm. was really beautiful and um, freeing. Yeah, yeah, it was very freeing. It Such does. a good feeling when it feels like you know you're free. Yeah. And not having to, I remember, you know, pretending a lot of the times in the past, like pretending to be a certain way or to, I don't know, like just in corporate or in, in, you know, in the competitions and um, just like, yeah, just feeling like I needed to look a certain way and be and act a certain way when that... I did it, but it didn't really feel authentic. And so it it was a little bit of a journey to like really discover who who I am and all of the f- things that fulfill me. Yeah. Wow. Sounds so amazing. Like um so I hired my coach recently, um, a new person. Mm-hmm. And um <clears throat> we were going over my human design um last week. Ooh. And um it was amazing that when well, she's telling my human design, I'm a generator and we're going mm-hmm. everything. And I felt the shield come my, over my body. And I said, look, you know, when you're talking about human design, everything's saying all makes sense now. She's like, you know what, dude? You finally got permission to be you. I was like, thank God. I finally got permission to be myself. This is who mm-hmm. I am. And let me enjoy every aspect of me. And that's when last week I got the mission to be me. Because in society, we always are taught, well, you got to do this. You got to, you know, go to high school, you go to high school, go to college, you got to get a career, you got to make a lot of money, you got to pay your bills, you got to get a family, you got to get married, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. But yeah. no one ever has asked us a question, do we have a permission to be ourselves? Are, are we being ourselves? Are we just doing because my parents said it, you know, my professor said it, or... The society says, I got to be this, I got to be that. I mean, the biggest question in life is who I am and where do I belong? Yeah. Mm. And the, the biggest question, the answer to that is just be who yourself is. Stop mm-hmm. comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to society. Be you. Yeah. If this makes you happy and it's not hurting anybody else and gives you plenty of joy, have at it. You know, go for it. You know, one question I'm really curious about. Um, I didn't do. I didn't do a lot of research. I did not do a lot of research on it. You said shamanism, and that did I pronounce it correctly or no? Yes. You okay. Can you explain to me at least and to our audience what what is that? What is that? What is that? And how do you do it? And what does it mean? Um, well, briefly, shamanism is. You know, when you think of like an. Africa, when people are in like their tribal, like in in their tribes and they're, they're, you know, they're doing the dancing and they're doing the healings and they're connecting with the gods. Um, So there's that aspect in Africa, one example. And then you have um, your natives here in the U.S. who, you know, they have their land, they, um, they gather around the fire, they connect with the gods and they do healing. So it's like, it's it's almost this there's different aspects to it for each culture but that's the the grassroots of it is really connecting with nature and um going back to like the simple simple ways learning to um to be as one in the community um learning to um connect with energy for healing and guidance um, learning to walk in beauty and in, in grace with grace. Um, yeah. So it's, it's all of that. Oh my God. It sounds so amazing. It's been really, really nice to learn this path. And, and, um, I've been, I've been learning some of, of the, the, the native culture, but I'm digging into the African cultures now and I'm learning some of, some of their ways. And, um, it's just, it's it's a really simple way of um, of being and feeling like having gratitude for all that we're connected with and how we are here, you know, 
living on earth. We are, you know, what always dumbfounds me is if there's, <laughs> this is like going back to um, like my faith in all of this is like, we are literally like on a piece of dirt floating in the middle of space that has no ending. You know, (laughs) how can you not have faith in like a higher, um, in a higher being or, or, you know, universal magic, you know, (laughs) we're literally floating in space. And so, I mean, that always like, whenever I have my moments, I'm like, okay, wait a second. (laughs) let's remember like we're just like these little tiny ants on a big piece of dirt here (laughs) and we have a sun we have a moon we have all of these like trees and plants around us that give us air and you know these these birds and these animals that give us like these uh different kinds of medicines and and nourishment for our body it's just such a um amazing simplistic simplistic way of looking at life you know what? Well, I'm going to have to use that. I never thought about that. We are on a piece of dirt and we're not the biggest planet either. No, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're floating in space on a piece of dirt, not tied by anything. Not mm-hmm. tied by anything. Not, right. And we think we're the only ones out there, but we truly don't know. Yeah, we're not. So you have to believe in something higher than you. Mm-hmm. You have to have faith in something higher than you. Yeah. Or else how is this even possible? Yeah. It has to be something much bigger than us. We're just, like you say, we're just like an ant on a piece of dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Or we're that piece of dirt. (laughs) (laughs) To somebody else. Yeah. (laughs) There could be someone in another galaxy looking at us, but man... Those people out there, are, they're sure are small. Are mm-hmm. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, it could be someone, you know, as a kid, you have a magnifying glass, right? So you can see, you know, ants or see, you know, different things up close. What if someone's looking at us with a magnifying glass? Like, man, those people are sure are crazy on earth. We get yeah. it all figured out. They haven't figured it out already? Should someone yeah. help them? No, no, no. Leave it, leave it up to them. They'll figure it out. <laughs> You'll never know. There could be somebody looking at, at us like that. Yeah. And, and what are they doing to their planet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you see uh, yeah. yeah. So, to them, we're just like a piece of dirt to them. Like, look at all those dirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just these little things trying to, try to find our way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still trying to find our way. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it's sometimes too, like, you know, we go back to, you know, with society again into how society views us or we kind of try to fit in. We, then we end up putting boundaries, right? I, I think as humans, we're so um, used to having that boundaries and we limit ourselves, ourselves, but we never, we don't realize that once, you know, if you just don't limit yourself or just don't have any boundaries at all. Yeah. Anything yeah. like our our belief work, you know, the things that um, the things that, that has to do a lot with you know, what we were brought up and what we were taught us and and witnessed as we have as we were growing up, um, our our beliefs and the ability to recognize and be conscious of the things that are holding us back or you know putting up putting those walls up for us and seeing being able to see through it and work towards getting on the other side. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the huge thing that, um, you know, up until you either go to coaching school or hire a coach or really do some conscious work or metaphysics work or something. Um, people don't know what belief systems really are. And where they come from. They think, well, you know, I'm this way because my dad was like that or my mom was like this or this is who I am. Yeah. They happen to have a shattering event, be it you lose a loved one, you get cancer, something that just wakes you up and shatters you to the core. You're yeah. like, wait a minute here. Yeah. What the hell was I doing my whole life? You know, I, I don't want that anymore. Or I want this. Yeah. Do I really have to do that? What's really going on? We start digging in deep. And 
the, why does it take for that to happen? Why are we not knowing this as a kid? You know, mm-hmm. I know. I hear you. Why do, Why does it take something tr- so bad and so traumatic for us to wake up? Yeah. It, I I think. I mean, I believe that a lot of people are waking up now because of everything that we're going through in the past year mm-hmm. with COVID. I mean, it has it has impacted a lot of people in, in many different ways. And I think a lot of people are waking up now and seeing like, you know, taking have taking time to like see how they've been living and um analyzing and, and figuring out if that's the way that they want to continue to ha- to live their lives or if they want something different for themselves. Um, but yeah, it's a shame that it takes something so, so drastic to see. Yeah. Or just trying to find, find themselves, right. Find ourselves, figure, figure ourselves out. I mean, why does it take something like that to really find who we are? Why does it take this long or to, to even have a coach to find <laughs> to find <laughs> ourselves? But um, really, uh, I mean, it, 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 this is hard and I know it's hard to believe. And, y- you know, I think it's you are who you've been looking for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I think you mentioned it earlier. It's, it's always been there within you, even, you know, who you are now, it's always been there yeah. within you. You just yeah. didn't find, you just didn't really, I think it just didn't really open up for you until, you know, this last um, few years when you've, you know, you were trying to fulfill yourself and you weren't, you know, you thought you were getting fulfilled with what you're looking for, but you are not. And I think that's with all of us, you know, we are who we've always been looking for. It's there. It's, it's hard to believe. And I would say like, maybe just, God, the person that you've been looking for, just look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, maybe you'll see like clearly that you are who you've been looking for. Yeah. We are who we are looking for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we all got to find, give ourselves permission to be who we are. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Authentically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I have that's, my, a, that's a part, a big part of remembering, remembering who we are. Yes, and that could be as simple as just like thinking back into you know childhood days for some of us. You know, yeah. who, who were we then? How is that still a part of you now? Mm-hmm. When I did, I did a breakthrough session with my coach recently, and um, I had a lot of trauma, and pain I was holding on to as a child. And once we did our breakthrough session. All that pain and energy that was trapped, it's like gone. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. It's like it doesn't exist. It's completely gone. Like that anger, you know, our ego wants to kind of remind us of the pain, but it comes up and it's like, why are you thinking about that? Why are you thinking about this? Like I used to, all my years of my life, excuse me, we always used to think about, um, you know, before coaching all this stuff, um, if we had, a lot of money. Like I would think about, oh my God, if I won $90 million in the lady in the lotto, what would I do? And over the years, that the idea of winning that much money has diminished a great deal to, it's almost, it comes up. It's like, why are you thinking about that? Look how much gratitude you have around you right now. Because what happens, we're attracted to the wrong kind of abundance and we have a scarcity mentality by thinking about that. And it proved to be over the years, unfulfilling. Yeah. It's just an empty canister, unfulfilling. So I just stopped doing it and and it gave up a lot of attachments to clothes, to cars, to things, to people, to relationships, and just trying to be steadfast and still where I'm at, and everything will come in alignment with me because I'm being who I am. It's like a energy rod attracting different things towards me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, if you can't find the happiness and fulfillment within yourself alone, then you're not going to find it externally. No, because you're, you're going to constantly look for it if yeah. you keep looking for it. Yeah. Just going to keep finding like the next high, you know, the next temporary good, feel good thing. 
And right. it, that just becomes like a pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you really do have to search within. I call that the defective steering wheel syndrome. And if you drive your car down the street and so all of a sudden the steering wheel goes out, you can't steer anymore. You, you go every which way direction, right? But loose. And that's that natural high. You know, we're always trying to look for, you know, competing relationships, money, car, career, all these things we cannot control. And it's con- con- clearly a defective steering wheel. You know, if it when it goes awry, we feel like we're unfulfilled and we look for the next one. You know, we look for the next big job, the next better car, and then the next better purse, or the next better clothes, or all this crap that we do not control instead of just building that that inner inner happiness, the inner joy for ourselves that would give us infinite joy, infinite yeah. energy, and infinite possibilities. Yeah. It's all within. Yeah. If it can be taken away from you, then it's not really true fulfillment. Oh, I love that. If it can be taken away, it's not true fulfillment. Because not, because it's like Nelson Mandela or anybody out there that's been in, that's de- dealt with hardships. Yeah. They can take, they can treat them like crap, but they can't take the way they feel about themselves and what they're fighting for. Can't take yeah. that away. Yeah. You know what, Natasha, I want, I want to have this. Um, as we get towards the end of our podcast, it's been amazing. And I always like for our guests to share one thing as a takeaway. So for our audience members around the world, what is what would you say to people out right now that may be going through struggles or trying to find themselves? What would you tell us people out there in the world right now? Oh, um, <clears throat> let me think. I'd say all the answers are there for you. You are totally capable of coming out on top. You are loved and supported. Sit with yourself and search within. I love it. Sit with yourself and search within because the answer is always within you. Yeah. I'm going to add to my affirmation list. Answer is always within me. Yeah. It really is. That's always something that we have to keep reminding ourselves like constantly. And, you know, it's hard because you get, sometimes you get caught up with the outside world or the external you just don't, you know, we don't realize the answers right there. And like I said, you know, the person that you've always been looking for has has always been there. Yep. Discover that person that's in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. And also, we want to say this, Natasha, how can people find you? What they want to hear about your coaching practice and tell the audience how they find you, keeping in contact with you. Yeah, I do have a website at natashaseely.com. And I am on Instagram. Um, Natasha Seely Coaching, I think, is my name on Instagram. But yeah, I'm easily found found on the website. Um, and you can just contact me through there. There's a contact button in there. I'm currently offering one-on-one support and also I have a couple women's circles that are happening right now, and I'm also looking forward to embarking on some other group coaching activities later this year. So I'd love to have you get in contact with me. Awesome. You hear that, guys? Contact her. She's there for one-on-one support and women's only group. Look at that. Nice. Because we need it right now, and yeah. you have a right to get the help you deserve. Do not wait until things go upside down to actually get the help you deserve because you have all the power inside you right now. Mm-hmm. And I want to say thank you for everybody and thank you, Natasha, for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle Podcast. It's been amazing, Natasha, in your journey. I know we met before years ago at Twin Frog Fitness and we saw each other the last time at the competition <laughs> and hearing yeah. your story just, man... We have so much in common 
um, and we're on the right path. We should be on our own personal journey. Yeah. And I, I, I'm glad we're able to connect and with Gloria as well on this podcast, Life's a Shuffle, because hearing your journey is why really the reason why Gloria and I got started is that we were going to do a script and make it about X. But then after a while, I said, wait a minute, why don't you create these Y stories? Because the truth is someone out there is sharing your story, your journey, and by sharing your story on our, on our podcast, it gives them hope they will make it. It gives them hope they can get through it because those naysayers in our brain and those fears will come up and will challenge us to the point they beat us down. We just don't do anything with our life. So thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks again, Natasha, um, for sharing your story. And again, um, don't forget to check us out. We um, you have our website at www.lifesashuffle.com. And we also have our Facebook page as well. Um, if you'd like to connect with our guest and also have any questions for Ron and myself, you can email us at li- um, lifesashuffle at gmail.com. And, and this join- is Gloria. Go ahead. I was going to say one thing and join our, our Facebook group at Life's a Shuffle on Facebook and you can be a special guest and leave a comment and we'll talk about it on the podcast on air. Yes. And uh, yeah, there you go. And thank you for um, tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.